Indiana Jones. I've been a big fan since I was a kid. And that's why, recently, when these arrived in the mail, I was in for a nice surprise. These are Taito Memories, released on the PS2 in Japan back in 2005. These are the first two volumes, known as Jokan and Gekan, or upper and lower volumes. There's five of these in total, which are compilations of popular Taito arcade games going as far back as 1978. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I was scrolling through games, and one in particular caught my attention. So enough of my ugly mug. Why don't we take a closer look and see how all this relates to the Fedora hero. There's a plethora of great games to choose from in these compilations, but this one, Dunak, otherwise known as Growl in the West, is what we're taking a look at today. Released in Japanese arcades in 1990, one year after the last crusade hit theaters, this side-scrolling beat-em-up, or belt-scrolling action game as they're known over here in Japan, clearly takes a lot of inspiration from the movies, unabashedly so I'd say. There's four characters to choose from, and you can have up to four players at once, but why would you want to choose from anyone other than this Indiana Jones carbon copy? Interestingly, there's no female character to choose from, which these games usually have at least one of. It's truly the manliest of games. The story is pretty simple. Basically, in the early 20th century, poaching is getting out of control. So our hero sets out to free the captured animals and put an end to the illegal poaching ring, having no idea of the true evil foe behind it all. The gameplay is your basic beat-em-up two-button controls, one for attacking and one for jumping. These can be combined to do jumping kicks, as well as some super moves that trigger when you're surrounded by enemies. And boy oh boy does this game like to surround you. They don't hold back on crowding the screen with tons of foes at once, including menacing miniskirt babes, Luigi and Waluigi lookalikes, a variety of location appropriate enemies that would look right at home in any of the indie films, and even a rotund rapscallion that is the spinning image of Sala. Sala, no! I'm on your side! To even the odds, the player has access to weapons the enemies and crates will drop when they're hit. Some might seem odd at first, but pretty much everything you can get has had some variation in the indie films like the rocket launcher and machine guns, but more so, he becomes the spinning image of Jones once you get the revolver, and especially the whip, which even attacks enemies behind you. Great for crowd control. You can also lift things like boulders and barrels, which may not quite be so accurate, but it's still fun. I also like how if an explosive is thrown, the player will automatically die for cover as the others explode. The stages also do a good job of emulating the locations of the films without directly copying them. The first stage is straight out of the market area of Raiders. This leads to a fight on top of a train like in The Last Crusade. There's an underground cave filled with traps and dangerous lava, an obvious reference to Temple of Doom, complete with a rope bridge once you get out. It's a bit on the stubby side, but at least the effort was there. There's a couple of bosses that use large tanks that I'm guessing is a reference to the tank scene in The Last Crusade as well. As a man out to stop the poachers, there's a fun mechanic in some areas where you can save wild animals like uh, birds, deer, and elephants, and they will then help you out in the fight. The first time I saved the bird, I thought it was going to attack me, but then I realized it was swooping down to get the enemies. They don't stay with you too long, but it really adds to the excitement to be fighting alongside a huge elephant. The bosses are fairly basic, just big strong guys who will run at you wildly, flailing their arms at whoever's in the way, including each other. They take a beating though. I imagine this game was a real coin muncher in the arcades, as it's unrelenting in some spots. They even toss vehicles at you. Sadly, no one gets their head chopped off in propeller blades. Speaking of gore, apparently in the arcade version, the enemies will blow into bloody limbs when the explosives go off near them, but in this compilation release, that was removed. 
Uh, there's also a Mega Drive port that is limited to two players, but I've never tried that one, so I'm not sure how well it stacks up. The final boss is a weird one, as he seems to be some sort of circus ringleader with Wolverine claws jumping all around the stage. After what seems like an endless pool of hit points, he finally falls. But then, his body starts squirming towards you, and a huge worm bursts out. This thing lashes around, never moving the body, so it's really just a matter of patience to beat it. With the calm jungle sounds in the background and warbling screen effect, this is a very odd surreal final boss for a game that was up to that point a standard action adventure. I also feel this would have been a great opportunity to make it a giant snake instead of a worm to tie it further into Indiana Jones. But regardless, after the giant invertebrate falls, the animals are set free, the credits roll, and it's happily ever after. All in all, it's a fun game, especially for fans of the films who grew up in these types of arcade brawlers. There's been a plethora of indie games over the years, but as far as I know, there's never been just a basic arcade-style beat-em-up like this. Mm, the closest probably being the SNES game, which was excellent by the way. So, if you have the chance, I'd say give Runark aka Growl a chance as it's probably the closest thing we'll get to good Indiana Jones content these days, official or otherwise. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Sorry, sorry. Thank you.